Well, data and algorithm automation is where much glamorous innovation occurs. Digital systems are what allow these to happen. Digital systems include all of the hardware and software used to transform data and algorithms into solutions. When digital components are connected, they form a system. And when systems are connected, they form networks. For example, a smartphone is a digital system. It has software, apps and an operating system, inputs through the touchscreen, keyboard, camera and microphone, outputs through the screen and speakers, memory components, communication components such as SIM cards, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and a processor made up of one or more silicon chips. All together, this forms a digital system. Likewise, a desktop computer used on a farm may have specific software and hardware connecting it to milking equipment and Wi-Fi sensors to read identification tags on cows. And this digital system could record how much milk each cow produces and algorithmically control the attachment of milking equipment to the cows automatically providing feed and opening and closing gates. Much of this relies upon additional equipment, what is known as peripheral devices, connected to a digital system, but not necessarily essential to the system. Common examples are printers and scanners and digital cameras, but also motors to control gates, lighting controls, heating controls, lawn sprinkler controls, and hundreds of others. And because many of these are now controllable over the internet, and we are seeing them in all aspects of life, including our homes, we now refer to this as the Internet of Things, or IoT. This inter interconnectivity of devices is seen as the next revolution in computing, akin to the changes brought about by the internet and mobile devices. We will soon see every digital device interconnected and being able to be controlled remotely from your doorbell to your fridge, TV, washing machine, car, your watches, pacemakers, dog collars or light bulbs. Everything will be connected, sending data and being controllable. This will change again the way that we think about digital technology. And we need to get ahead of this change, preparing students to be able to think in ways that they can manage and exploit such changes, rather than being subject to them. Students will be designing their own solutions to home automation, robotics, and apps that can take from this vast array of new data and make them useful. But to do so, students need to understand how digital systems work, how the basics of their computers and smartphones work, down to the keyboards and mice much as you have done in creating a new interface device using your Makey Makey kits last week. But also, students need to know how digital information is communicated. This has been the revolution of the internet. But it starts with how a home Wi-Fi network works, how it's set up and configured, to how internet protocols facilitate information requests, and deliver data from servers located around the world based on coded addresses to that data to how this data is packaged up and sent and then interpreted by web browsers to display this data using specialized coding systems known as hypertext markup language or HTML. This can all be taught from text and worksheets but also through projects projects that solve real world problems these may involve students creating and running their own servers, connecting devices to monitor gardens remotely, sending such data to an online database and fetching from this database data that is then formatted to display using HTML on a web browser. Yes, students will need help with many aspects. Project-based learning does not abrogate the role of the teacher in any respect. But it does change this role from being the sole source of instruction to being one of many resources that students can draw upon. In the younger years, 
Teachers will still provide much of these additional sources, be they worksheets, direct instruction, online tutorials, games and activities. But over time, throughout the curriculum, this should diminish. As students take control of the selection and sourcing of assistance in developing their solutions. Now this is challenging for many teachers, but essential if the advantages of project-based learning are to be realised. Entrepreneurship, creativity, and not the least, computational thinking.